All right, everybody, welcome back to the match between TLER and The Cade. We're live once again with the Armageddon Dota 2 Asia Grand Slam. I'm Gods from Beyond the Summit, casting here live from Singapore. And we're in an unusual circumstance. We've got ourselves, well, I believe one standard. I think TLER were missing a player or two. I'm not sure if they're still missing everybody or not. Uh, they had a few people who arrived late. They were going to have to play 2v5. It looks like maybe a couple of those players have shown up. But it's an AP remake of the draft we just saw. So we've got the Cade playing over on that dire side. Up against the Radiant team, TLER of Indonesia. We'll have the two drafts unravel in front of us in just a second here. I believe TLER, they've got one stand in, in their roster. So we'll have to wait and see whether or not that's, they're playing 4v5 or what is exactly the case here. But uh, there has been uh, a few few players who are just not appearing on time on 14 but hey the show will go on we'll uh, get things underway anyways it looks like oh disconnect coming out from one of the uh, Sri Lankan players but hopefully nothing too much to worry about here as uh, we're gonna get ourselves into this game now see the picks come out here from both two teams as uh, we'll introduce we'll introduce our dire team they've got well both teams going with four here as we've got this Sri Lankan team over on the dire side decayed or as some people have apparently messed me saying it's pronounced the Kade. Uh, we've got TFC playing the Phantom Lancer, Monkey playing the Shadow Demon, Paradox playing the Tempo Assassin, and we've got KOD playing the Keeper of Light. The one player who hasn't connected, it's Demon, and he is playing the Clockwork. So we're going to see Demon on Clockwork. He's reconnected back into the game now. Over on the Radiant side, we've got the TLER side, the Indonesians. They've got Dots playing the Bane. Gyrocopter in the hands of Stand In One, Hiori playing the Tide Hunter, and then Waihu playing the Queen of Pain. Then we've got, finally, Lifestealer being played by Road Sector. So uh, I'll have to wait and see. I don't know if someone's actually controlling this hero or what's going to be the go here as far as having this stand in player, but we'll wait and find out as this game unravels. We'll know a bit more soon as uh, Tilia can't really r reveal too much about their lanes. Although, based on what they've got, I mean, this is going to be some very unusual lanes. The tri lane, maybe a tie, Gyrocopter and, and, and Bane. I mean, Lifestealer maybe... Lifestealer probably wants to go the safe lane, but... Who do they send top if he goes if he goes bottom? They don't really have any obvious offlane hero. For the Dire team, it's a lot more standard. You've got your tri lane with the PL. PL, you know he's going to want to have that safe lane, the easiest place to go farm. They could go offensive tri lane, but it's just it's not really worth doing so. You've got your opponents can pull, deny XP, deny farm. They've got a life stealer who's hard to kill with the raid. So all in all, it's not really a likely scenario where you see that the clockwork is sort of sort of geared towards going into that offlane role. The question is how the TLER look to look to combat that. And uh, we're seeing part of what they're going to be doing here. This movement, these lanes that we're going to ha have coming out. Can't say exactly what they are. You guys can see. But the players as well can hear me. So uh, we'll have these lanes settle in a minute. Once the mid lane we see who's going to be up against who there. Queen of Pain and TA, the likely two mid solos. Both heroes want to go mid. Both heroes want to rush that bottle. And it looks like we'll see something just like that. As uh, the early game, just being used to sort of try scout your opponent's lanes, get down some early wards, whether it's get rune vision, block the creep pulls like we're seeing here, um, or or do something a bit different. Look to uh, just sort of uh, get some lane wards down, which is also saying if you want to go with a safe lane trail line, you want to have those lane wards. So if the Dire team, if they're looking for a safe lane trail line, having a lane ward can be so, so useful. Something that has changed in the recent patches, you can no longer use these small pulls. You can't pull this up and bring the creep wave in. It's a lot harder to do now. And uh, we are going to have our lanes unravel. It's going to be mid lane where we see the TA up against the Queen of Pain. And uh-oh. Uh-oh-oh. Not going to happen. TA sniffs that something's up. The rotation from Titan Bane. Not going to achieve much. And Gyrocopter at top. He's on his own for the time being. It's TLER, the stand-in one. As uh, we'll see Shadow Demon coming out from the side here. Looking maybe for a disruption. He's going to start with some harass. Disruption is there. There will be an Illuminate in just a second. Needs to start casting it. Lance, is it there? Sure. No, no Lance. Decides not to go for it. I don't think they felt they could get the kill there. But they did get some big, serious... No kill, no first blood just yet. So we do have the trialing versus trialing at top. It's an unusual one coming out from the Indonesian side, the Radiant team. Tide, Gyro, and Bane. And uh-oh, they found a the target. They found Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon get caught out in no man's land. Get brought down by a Gyrocopter Rocket Barrage. First blood goes to the Tide Hunter. An unorthodox trialing, but there we have it. It works out. Gyrocopter does a barrel roll in celebration. And look at this bottom lane. You've got the, the Lifestealer up against the Clockwork in a 1v1 matchup. This is a 1v1 matchup which is going to favor the Lifestealer. So 
in theory, you've got three lanes that all look okay for the Indonesian side. The bottom lane, they should win. Mid lane, they can break even. And top lane, with that kill already on their side, well, hey, that's pretty good for them. As uh, it looks like both two teams sell up. Let's catch another look at that first blood at this top lane. The sleep, setting things up, and well, there they fall. Gush was there, Rocket Prize was there. And the, the key thing is there, they isolated him away, the Shadow Demon away from the Creep Wave. We're seeing it once again here at top lane, but this time it's on the PL. PL doesn't have the top walk. He is invis. Is there vision? Oh, disruption. I think I think it would have been okay regardless because he was outside of range of the Sentry Ward, so that rocket was... Well, the missile was not going to hit once he got outside of Sentry Ward range, but it's such a great setup if they can get him away from the Creep Wave. That's really the key thing. Sleep them away from the Creep Wave. If they're by the Creep Wave, then we have something which is, well, not going to work because the Rocket Barrage is not going to do full damage if it gets split between multiple heroes as well as the Creep Wave. Mid lane TA as well as uh, Queen of Pain, both now with bottles up, I believe. Well, I say that, but does TA actually have one? Yes, he does. There it is. No upgrade courier. We haven't seen any courier sniping. We saw multiple attempts at courier sniping yesterday. The teams in this game have not picked up on it, apparently. Courier sniping should be the name of the game. Not going to happen for the raiding team. They've upgraded theirs, but this dire courier. Oh, man, it looks vulnerable. PL just looked to go back to sort of safe farming here at top, but... Problem is, look at this life still farm at bottom line. He's leading by a long margin. PL just unable to get too much, uh, unable to get really farm at all at this top lane because of this strong try lane. Now we have Magic Sticks up. Bane as well as Gyrocopter, both with Magic Sticks. Tide, he's got one of his own. So all three is with Magic Sticks. If they're looking to spam him down, if they, well, if they're looking to spam down the try lane using Lances, Illuminate, keep the Chakra up, keep the Shadow Poisons going, it's just going to give them Magic Sick Charges. And Magic Sick Charges is not something useful to give away. As uh, top lane, PL still unable to get near for farm. So right now we can only just Lance creeps, it seems. And every time he Lance his creeps, it's more magic sick charges being given away. Mid lane, TA versus Co-op. One of those sort of token 1v1 mid matchups. Neither hero, well, one hero with a significant lead. It's TA. I mentioned TA has a slightly better time CSing and farming here, and especially with this bottle crow we're seeing happening. Courier goes back and forth, bringing the bottle, refilling it. And even if TA can't get runes, it doesn't even matter. And this is a good thing because it means Queen of Pain goes for runes. While Queen of Pain is getting runes, he's missing XP. That's time where, well, TA is getting farm. He's also getting denies. And TA actually is going to go for this rune. More than anything, just wants to make try and deny Queen of Pain from getting it. Or try and enforce the Tidehunter who was rotating in to pick up the rune. Because if Tide picks up the rune to prevent the TA getting it, Queen of Pain forced the Bottle Crow himself. But not going to happen there. Top lane. Looks like Bane took a bit of damage. Brain Sap just out on their Phantom Lancer. He almost needs a magic stick of his own at this point. Gyrocopter out farming the PL in spades. 18 CS to just the 10 CS on this PL. And all in all, I gotta say this die team, this isn't the start they were hoping for. TLR do have a bit of a hold over this top lane. They've got boots up now on a couple of their heroes. Bane doesn't, but he's playing that main support role. They'd love to get some early items on this tight under the arcane boots and the blink dagger. As PL being constantly healed up. South, Shakrid, he's out of regen now. And the problem is his supports keep it light out of regen too. Shadow Demon still has some, but all in all, this is not a lane that's going all too well for the uh, for the dire side, for the Sri Lankan team. TA at mid. Still continuing to bottle crow. He's really just using that to its full potential. Clockwork at bottom's got a bottle of his own, but look at his CS. 14 to the 33 of the life sealer. Huge discrepancy between those two heroes, and as a result, well, it's going to be a bit of a, a, a slight, uh, slight early game. They've got almost 1.5k lead, and we're pretty early on. Not quite what we saw with the ABC team. Oh, Nightmare's there to lead things off. Level 2 Brain Sap as well there if they need. There's going to be a gush followed up by Brain Sap. Rocket Barrage is going to finish off the first kill. Missile coming in. Is there going to be enough damage? Yes, there is. Just in time. Illuminate's going to be there with a the Lance. They're going to get a revenge kill. They bring down Gyrocult a bit at the cost of two support heroes. The defensive disruption didn't really... I mean, it helped keep the Keeper alive, alive a bit longer, but... End of the day, it wasn't enough. Rocket's coming flying in top as well. Clockwork realizing there's constant aggression at the top line. He wants to help out, but... Not succeeding in doing so. Mid, once again. It's the race to the runes. And it looks like TA might win this one. Queen of Pain. Admits defeat. And uh, brings in the bottle. Well, Queen of Pain actually going to top lane. Oh, top lane. Can't keep my eyes off it. They get the PL. A big kill at that. We'll have that one on the instant replay in just a second, guys. But 
Watching this room battle at mid apparently was uh, a bit more exciting than watching the kills for the time being, but TLER, they find themselves getting another kill at this top lane. That's four kills for one trade at the top lane. Here we have it. Let's take a look at this kill at top lane. They set things up with a nightmare. I don't even think they need it. Yep, they used just an anchor smash. No gush even needed. Tide didn't have mana for a gush, but didn't even mana. And he's going to have mana in just a second now. Saving the mana. They're getting kills without even having to use all these gushes. Bane a bit lower mana, but he's going to gradually set that back up. And this, this aura coming out from the ring of Aqua and the gyrocopter is going to help out there as well. Bottom lane, Lifestealer still farming. He's now got Phase Boots Bracer. He's make, it's the makings of the, the mobility Lifestealer. The Phase Boots drum build that we sort of seen, we, we, we start to, to know and love just so much because it's so aggressive. You get all this movement speed from it and you can just look to get kill after kill. And especially once you get the armlet, you're not getting kited around as much. The problem with Lifestealer was even with an armlet, teams used to go treads, armlet, then desolate. The problem was he didn't have the movement speed he needed. He got kited around a lot and he just really couldn't do enough damage, even with these high DPS items. Team started to realize all you needed, you didn't even need the Desolate. Just having Phase Boots, Drums, and an Armlet was more effective because you didn't get kited around by four staff by the heroes outrunning you. You can catch up always using all that mobility, all that movement speed. First rotation of the game is uh, un un somewhat unsuccessful. And here we go. Both teams on the move now. TA trying to hunt down this Banatropus. We'll, we'll find him actually. The trap going to slow him down here. Sleep is there. Tiliar's Bane still on the run here. Problem is TA has a haste rune. Is he going to commit to this? It looks like the cave's paradox. He's still chasing this. Rocket going to do some additional damage. And the slow is there. TA oh, this should be a kill. There's a nightmare up in another second. Is it going to come in time? No, it's not. Doesn't get the kill there. And, well, unfortunately for Bane, it was just half a second too late. If he had that sleep up, he could have slept himself or slept the TA and probably gotten out of there okay. TA goes back towards the mid lane. Clockwork, he's actually rotated out of that bottom lane because of that Tide coming in. Tide came bottom and then Clockwork realized, hey, I can't stay here anymore. It's too dangerous. So Clockwork says, I'm getting out of here. He goes mid. Now four kills to two. So the Cade, they do manage to get another kill on the board. But things still not looking too good for this PL as far as his farm's concerned. Gyrocopter as well as Lifestyle are both out farming him drastically. Even the Queen of Pain with a lot of farm up on him. And look at this. Here we go. Looks like TLER are looking to make something happen here at this top lane. Oh, disrupting going to lead things off here. Illuminate to follow. Gyrocopter drops an ultimate. Will it be enough damage? It's not going to be enough to keep him alive. It doesn't look like. Maybe just PL still on the back line. Is he going to get this kill? Doesn't actually look like a gyrocopter rocket barrage. Clockwork's there. This should ensure the kill. PL, he's still alive. Sonic Wave is there. Oh, Queen of Pain. Double kill. Let's make it three. Clockwork's stopping, sucking his own cocks. He's not going to be able to TB out of this one. No chance in hell. Arcane Bootsy picks up just before he dies. Triple kill for the Queen of Pain. Fantastic play from the Indonesian side. TLER. Rotation top. They get kill after kill. Illuminate going to blast them off a bit. Slow down this push, but all said and done. Really great fight for the uh, Indonesian side at top lane. Gyrocopter, well, he was the bait. He did go down for it, but he got a fantastic ultimate. I think he got two separate rocket prizes off, doing a ton of damage there to a couple different targets, and he almost brought down the PL on his own. It took the Queen of Pain to get the cleanup, but all said and done. That's a lot of gold, a lot of XP on this Queen of Pain, who's now hits level 9, approaching level 10 even. Templar Assassin. Well, on the move. Oh, no. Watch out, Keeper of the Light. Dewarding, and that is not going to end, end well for you. Here comes the Gyrocopter. He's actually going to get disrupted. There is a missile coming out. Brain Sap as well. This is the end for you. It's the end of... Uh, as the world of the world as Keeper Light knows it. Sentry battles happening on the high ground. Both teams with a sentry, neither team with an observer. What is going on? As Bane takes a fall to the Templar Assassin. Templar Assassin actually gets a kill off there on the sidelines. He's now still chasing. What's a gyrocopter? Slows are there. Clockwork rockets coming in, flying on over. Looking to finish off this gyrocopter. PL cuts off the cuts off his escape and gets the kill there. Down goes the gyrocopter and well, two kills going back the way of the cave. They strike back, and we'll have to see if they can keep on keep this momentum going because they sure as hell need it. They're behind. They're looking at a lifestyle with a lot of farm now with this phase boots drum up. He's going to start getting to work on that armlet, and the K to look to apply some pressure now. This TS had a good start. Phase boots bottle magic wand. He's three and zero, and he should have this good start. He's been spending so much time using this courier to bottle crow that he needs to be having a high impact on this game, and that's what we're seeing here. Queen of Pain, similar story though. Three zero and one doesn't have quite the same farm as the Templar Assassin, but has the kills. 
has moved around the map, also has a lot of levels from that triple kill at top lane, level 10 on the Queen of Pain. PL, look at this, he's really strapped for items here, forced to just get these cheap cost effective items. It's going to be a ring of aqua as well as this Tranquil Boots coming, we're not looking at the Fusal Blade anytime soon. And problem is late game, a Gyrocopter is a nice little hero to have up against the PL. The Flat Cannons is so good at dealing with all those PL illusions if you have the damage items to back it up. Top lane, Tilly Well, they're back here with uh, Bane as well as Gyrocopter. The duo's worked out well for them for the most part from here on out, and here's, here's what they're looking for. This fella here. Can they find the opening to use this? And they need some vision here, and it looks like, well, it's going to come. Is there going to be any defense to this top lane? Both Tidehunter as well as Gyrocopter are pushing on up, and Tide, he's level 6. Hitting himself a big key level here. Meanwhile, it's mid lane where TA still farming, looking for that blink dagger. Hasn't got a TP scroll, so we're not going to see TA coming towards the top lane, at least not right now. I say that. Here we go. We could see a battle for this top tier 1 tower. This could be where the action may unfold. The vision is there. Rockets coming flying in as well, providing vision for the Dire team. So both teams trying to get as much scouting information as possible here at the top lane. Tier 1 tower. Starting to get tipped away. Oh, hook shot. Perfect onto the bay. This is the target you want to find with this as well. He's trying to brain up. Actually succeeds in doing that. Tide Ravage hits, I believe, mostly everyone. On the back lines is the, is the Templar Assassin, but taking a ton of damage. Sonic Wave cleans up the Templar Assassin. They've lost the Bane who got hooked, though. But they were losing the Bane regardless, and they get the Templar Assassin in return. And here goes the Queen of Bane on the sideline, looking for the Keeper Light. Keeper Light will not send a chance. Gyrocopter getting caught in some cogs here, but this is not a Gyrocopter who can really fight his way out of this one, or is it? Shadow Demon does enough damage here. Queen of Pain, unfortunately, but the Cade is just going to clean on up. One by one, they all fall down. Queen of Pain with a haste rune, zipping on round. And uh oh, Shadow Demon, you got to be careful. Disruption on cooldown, not for much longer. There's a gush as well as one more right click. Queen of Pain with a blink and a scream. Well, uh oh, out of mana now. Peel is there, but Peel also out of mana. It looks like we have a four for one trade, no, four for two trade. Gyrocopter as well as Bane going down. They killed everyone except the Phantom Lancer. And what Lifestyle well, even TP'd in towards the end there, although he wasn't needed. He's been just continually farming. Looks like he picked up maybe a couple of assists at some point there, but they commit a lot there, the Cade, and it doesn't pay off them. Unfortunately for them, they were fighting into a Tide Ravage. The Tide Ravage caught three. Two on the sidelines over here, and then it caught, most importantly, the TA right here. His team couldn't help them. They were trapped back here. And then TA just got burst down by the Rocket Barrage. Rocket Barrage just chipping away at the refraction charges, and then they bring him down with relative ease. Oh, mid. Gyrocopter's found maybe another kill. It's going to be on the PL. PL on the run. Is there enough damage? The Rocket Barrage. It eludes him. Not enough damage to bring down the PL. It looks like Shadow Demon has just managed to help keep him alive. They're trying to bring down the Gyrocopter. He needs to dodge his Shadow Poison. Finds an illusion room. One more right click. Is going to be enough? He's trying to find his way out of this one. Not going to happen. Rocket Missile is there. Templar Assassin trying to bring it down. Mel does not help. You need three attacks, melded or not. Oh, Queen of Pain. I think Queen of Pain was looking for that Phantom Lancer. He's going to blink out. Luckily for him, he has got that level four blink. So, short cooldown on that. But, uh oh, TA is chasing. He's going to blink down with his own one melt attack. Not enough. Tide is now there under the tower, trying to just fight this TA. Gushes in, but forced to retreat. And Clockwork, oh, has he got it? No, he hasn't. It's on cooldown. A lot of bloodshed here. Top lane, mid lane. Only bottom lane it seems, to be, be, seems to have been quiet for some time now. Gyrocopter's heading there now. Says, life still a man. You've had all this free farm. It's time for someone else to free farm. And now it's mid lane where a fight's going to break out. Templar Assassin's gone in with the clock. They've finished off the Tidehunter. Dusted is the Templar Assassin. Can they actually get any more kills here? Life still, he's come. He's thrown up over the party. He's looking for this clockwork, but can't actually get out. He's trapped between trees as well as some cogs. The clockwork broke out of the cogs, but life still was still stuck. And uh-oh. TA, is there a grip? Yes, there is. Hookshot going to hit hit the Lifestyle. Lifestyle actually gets slept up. The slick, the grip was there, but Lifestyle was somehow slept. Oh, no. Terrible, terrible mistake. As Lifestyle will and, and manage to finish him off regardless. And Clockwork gets taken down as well. Queen of Pain, luckily, has come in to help clean up. Queen of Pain now with eight kills on a monster kill streak here. Fantastic start for the Queen of Pain. The rest of the TLR side, it's... Well, it's been all right for him, but there's a couple heroes who are just struggling. Most importantly, the Gyrocopter. He's 5-5. Five and five. His farm has been slowed down, but considering he's been in 13 of these 16 kills, he's having a very high impact game regardless. He's all about creating space for these other heroes. Most importantly, the Life Seal, the Bomb. And then you've also got the Queen of Pain, who's got a decent amount of farm himself. And now the Tier 1 Tower at mid lane, being pressured. Tide looking for an opening to go on in. Just trying to, almost, almost just to scare these heroes away, saying, oh, come on guys, I dare you to try going us. 
Keep the light. He's not going to go on them, but he's just going to stand from long range. Rocket, Illuminate, dead Creep Wave. How annoying is that if you're this Radiant team? You're like, okay, we can push. Our Creep Wave's here, and they've got no Creep Wave. Nope. Your Creep Wave just gets instantly destroyed by one Illuminate and one Clockwork Rocket. Bottom lane, Shadow Demon has actually hit level 6, so... Looks like only the Keeper of the Light not hitting that level 6 mark yet. The Relocate as well as the Blinding Light will help out in some of these fights. Life Stealer can rage off the Mischance, but if you get him afterwards or before or after, you can get a bit of, a bit of Mischance on this Life Stealer, basically helping prevent some of the damage he can do in these team fights. Once again, Tier 1 Tower push attempted, and once again, Illuminate Rocket Spam preventing it. They're chipping away every time, though. With this, I mean, even without the creep wave, Life Shield can just go in with Rage, do a couple hundred damage, then back off when Rage is about to wear off. And we're going to see them sort of at least give up for the time being. The pressure sort of slowing down mid. They're actually going to bring Gyrocopter in. Maybe they're going to apply some additional pressure here at the mid lane, but the rest of the TLR team aren't there, aren't anywhere to be seen. At least not for this, uh, the Cade team. Oh, Illusion. They were looking for the PL. They had, a, they had a rotation trying to find him out there. They even dropped Sentry Ward just to try and find him, but it doesn't pay off. PL scouts things out with his illusion room while his hero is invis. So good awareness coming out from him. And uh oh, a 14 for Queen of Pain. He does not have the awareness. Needed. Oh, Shadow Demon, where was the disrupt? That was where you need one of those hero disruptions to dodge that Sonic Wave. It was a bit slow with it. T1 down now goes down with Keeper Light on the sidelines. Easy T1 push. And that's what Queen of Pain had to do. Get the Invis rune, come round from behind, kill the Keeper of the Light, and then you're set to go. And they defend the bottom T1 tower as well. TA was trying to sneak that, go for a bit of a counter push, but Gyrocopter's there. He's happy to get some farm as well. Stop this push. TA, now dodge. Easy. Mid lane. They haven't used this tide ravage. I don't think they've used it since that top fight, so they're definitely gonna be looking for another opening to try and try and make some use out of that. Bane. Gonna scan out just some PL illusions here. Try to figure out what this PL's up to. Where's he farming? They want to shut him down. They want to slow down that Diffusal Blade as much as possible. He's really struggling to get it up. Normally you'd see it around this 18, 19 minute mark. But he's still got a bit of a way to go. And well, I mean, the good news is when he has it, he'll have all the levels he needs. Oh, bang. Caught in no man's land. Literally speaking, because now he's a dead man. One does not go full Rambo like that, Bane into the enemy territory, trying to de ward up here. He actually succeeds in doing so, but at the cost of his own life, so not really a decent trade for him there. I mean, ultimately, you're denying some good vision from your opponents, but giving away a kill for it is just so unnecessary. If you ever look to push and go there with your whole team, and you need a de ward, that's when you de ward. But de warding just there is not really worthwhile. Queen of Pain at mid has finished off an Orchid, so we're going to see the silence stick coming out from Queen of Pain, making it a lot easier to focus down some of these heroes. If you can silence TA before a, re a refraction gets used, or a meld, you can go for some solo kills. Same goes for PL, get the silence off before he doppel walks away. Suddenly, suddenly becomes a lot more killable. And Telia, well, it looks like they're happy to just back things off, play a bit more of a safer style now. Lysil trying to get to work on his Desolator. Oh, de-warding action here. Are they going to make a play on this? Queen of Pain thinking about it. Is nearby in the mid lane? Not going to make a go for it, it looks like, as uh, the D-Ward does happen from the Dire team. They're trying to regain as much map vision as possible. And uh, as uh, both teams have backed up, we'll take another look at that last fight at the top lane. What's better than seeing a Bane die once, seeing a Bane die twice? There was just... Uh, it was no, there was no way of getting out there. Your opponents can see you as you're D-Warding, and that's just uh, one of those sort of mistakes that shouldn't happen. It was, it was, I'd say he's lucky to actually get that D-Ward off with a Clockwork or Long Range Hook Initiation. Uh, it's just not really worthwhile to go for that D-Ward. I mean, there's such a high chance he doesn't even succeed in D-Warding that. You need to go with your team and you need to go when you're looking to push and be grouped as five. But it's still a, a decisive lead for TLR. They're going to be grouped up at bottom lane here looking for a bit of a push. Four heroes are there. Life still a Queen of Pain, Gyrocop to show themselves. Well as Bane and the question is, where is the tie with that Ravage? Where is that Tide Ravage? You haven't seen it in some time. And this Dire team, well, they're just looking to sit back as much as possible. Illuminate Spam, Rocket Spam. It's worked out pretty well for them so far. As BKB now up on the Gyrocopter. We did see that one over when it was killing the Creep Wave. Have to see if that's going to help out in this team fight. Especially with some of this long range map. Uh-oh. 
Nightmare are going to lead things off here. They're going to try well, they're going to try and engage here, and this is to set up for the Tide Ravage if possible. Tide looking for those openings. Can he find it? He's looking to stay on the high ground here, trying to get on in. He has got... Well, I don't know if we can say this just yet. Gyrocopter com sort of Gyrocopter's gone Rambo and wait. He gets fought down by Tear. Tide is too late with the Blink Ravage. Oh, Gyrocopter's already gone down, and that's what he's waiting for. And 14 for TLR. They've already lost two. Queen of Pain, though, is all they need. He's beyond God. Like, Sonic Wave's going to drop on Demon. Demon getting low, but not low enough to go down. They've killed off two just for... Well, they've lost two just for a Templar Assassin. I think the Dire team knew about the Blink Dagger. I didn't want to say anything about it because I wasn't sure if they knew, but it looks like they did because they were playing so, so cautiously around it. It was as if they knew. Because they were not giving Tide any position to blink in and get a Ravage off. And Gyrocopter was going in somewhat Rambo, thinking that Tide was there to back him up, but Tide just couldn't find the opening. There was no possibility to get a Ravage off hitting more than two or three heroes until too late. When he finally got the Ravage lined up, it was Gyrocopter was dead. The BKB had worn off. Gyrocopter went in with the BKB. And I think part of it was as soon as they see the BKB for the Sri Lankan team, your instant reaction is just to back off and retreat. And once they back up and retreat, it's something like, oh, well, how's Tide going to get in for a Ravage? Because these heroes aren't even fighting a Gyrocopter with a BKB anyways. Over that bottom lane. What's this Queen of Pain got now? Just level 14. Hasn't picked up any new items since having this Orchid. But he's got a ton of levels to play around with. He's going to really bring down these supports quickly. Keep the Light and Shadow Demon. Both hovering around that 800 HP mark. And this... These extra levels, these extra points in Shadow Poisons do a lot of damage, and here we're seeing it. Keep it light. Well, goodbye, sir. Clockwork going to come in with... Well, I don't think you can really kill this. Immediate blink and TP out. There was no way to get in range once he's used that hook shot. Shadow Demon was coming, trying to go for Purge. Even with a Purge, I don't, th I don't think they can get that kill. They don't have any follow-up disable. As long as Queen of Pain blinks out, which you can do, you can blink out even with the Battery Assault on you, you're going to be okay as that Queen of Pain, and Queen of Pain gets out of there with the blink. No new pickups just yet, despite just TPing back to base. So Queen of Pain maybe going to be looking for something big. Probably the Sheep Stick. Silo is the next major item. Does make a lot of sense here. And it looks like Teal out. The main thing for them is wait till Tide Ravage is back up. Then they can look for another team fight. Oh. It's going to be a bit harder, though. There is a Diffusal Blade on this PL. Going to make these team fights not as easy for them to win, but it's still a pretty decisive league going the way of the Radiant team. And the net worth of their top three heroes exceeding their opponents, but not by a huge margin. Just a minor lead for them for the time being, but that's just going to go get, get worse and worse because, well, there's a bit of a jump up now. The Lifesteal has picked up his next item. It's a Desolator. He's got his, uh, his next TPS item to go with his armlet. And suddenly this top tier 2 tower is going to become very hard to defend. Keep it light. Doesn't want to get too close. You want to spam Illuminate, but you also don't, can't afford to get caught out. He's also not even in position to spam this. Now is when you can D-Ward. You've got your whole team top. This is where it's safe to D-Ward, Bane. Although it looks like for the time being, they're just sort of looking to seed this top tower. PL trying to spam things off as much as possible. Lifesteal is scanning in the front lines. Bane, no sentry wards up anymore, so there's no, not going to see any dewarding happening. And it looks like TLER, they're not looking to overextend here. They're not looking to sort of force the issue at the top lane just now. Lifesteal goes back mid, gets himself some farm. Gyrocopter's at bottom with a Treads PKB. He's looking to just get some more farm of his own. The K just trying to maintain control of their own jungle. We saw how important de-warding and just keeping wards in their own jungle was earlier. They catch up the Bane, they instantly de-ward. Even just a sentry ward, they just don't want anything in their own jungle. And if they do lose control of their own jungle, they're going to start falling further and further behind as far as gold goes. They miss on farm. We see this, sort of, this last two, three minutes has been much more stable as a result of the K sort of maintaining some map control. Problem is, can they keep that? Can they keep that for long? And this is always something you can do, even when your opponents have map control. If you, you go for this little trick here. Bottom lane, the K just looking to put most of their efforts into defending this bottom lane for the time being. A lot of like five men sticking together. They're really worried about what TLR might be doing right now. I can't say too much about what the two teams are doing. As, as mentioned, as you guys know, now we can see what happened. TLER come out. They were grouped as five, looking to sort of lay a trap. As uh, constant scouting coming out from the Clockwork Rockets. Couldn't really find all that much, but once they pop out bottom lane, that's when, that's when the, the, the Dire team know. That's when they can now look to go out a bit more. As soon as the heroes are spotted on the map, PL goes back out to farm his own jungle. TA goes out to get a rune. Maybe even look to push this top lane. Because they're expecting the TLER team to be 
either camping in the there uh, in the dire ancients, maybe a bottom lane, maybe camping near the secret shop or in the Roshan pit. They're not expecting them to be near the top lane at this point. They saw the entire five-man team at the bottom lane not long ago. The Cade, well, they've got Templar Assassin. <laughs> uh, when there's nowhere left to farm, this is what you do. Let's go to the enemy ancients. And neither team going for Roshan yet. The rockets from the Clockwork were constantly, constantly scouting it back. I'm really surprised. The Radiant team can definitely look to take it. Having a blink tide ravage is really, well, all you need. You just have tide sitting outside, and for the Dire team to contest Roshan is going to be so, so difficult. Life still out. Vitality booster. He's going for a Heart of Tarras now. Just going pure HP survivability. Keep the light, trying to farm some neutral here from the low ground as uh, luckily for you guys on the live stream. Hey, I can analyze the game for about two minutes. They're doing a PA announcement, so I'm no longer on the PA system, which means I can talk about all that juicy stuff which is going on which I normally wouldn't otherwise be able to talk about, but no team going for Roshan, no team really looking to do a whole lot here. Passive farming coming out from both teams to some extent, as uh, it is the Radiant team who come out on top in these farming games, though. Lifesteal and Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain especially has had a great game. 11-0-2 right now. Sheep Tick is going to be coming up in, in some time. Has the ultimate orb, just needs that side of the vice. d warding happening on the high ground. Tide finds it. He's going to get Ravage. This is once again, this is the same trick that Bane made. One does not D ward on your own, but you, maybe as a Tide with a Ravage, you can. He's taking a lot of damage. Is there any heals? No, there's not. Keep your light Illuminate fishing off, and now in comes the Queen of Pain. Trying to fish off this Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon silence up. Should be an easy kill. Gyrocopter, what is that ultimate? What is that ultimate? I'm not too sure about that one, but stand in number one. The TLR player has uh, managed to trade two for two at least here. PL finishes off Queen of Pain. A ton of gold going into his pocket. Now up to 3k gold. With those kills, Lifesteal now chasing and chasing. Trying to bring down this Templar Assassin. Templar Assassin invis. And there's no call down anymore. PL is here as well. Invis. He's sitting on a bit low mana here. He can't really fight this out of this one. And well, all said and done, a big, big clash going on here. In the in the jungle. And all at caused by Tide. Tide trying to deward on his own. Doing the same mistake that we saw the Bane doing here. Tide goes to deward on his own, gets caught up by three heroes. The backup arrives, but he's already sort of, he's used Ravage on three or four heroes, but hasn't really done enough. As uh, I quickly get away from there. Those of you who know the in-game audio know that is a damn loud audio sound to be hovering over. Decayed, well, they're looking for a BKB on this Templar Assassin. Ogre Club is up. BKB is still in the work, so. Lifesteeler, as mentioned, he had that vitality boost. He's looking for Heart of Trask for himself. Queen of Pain looking for a sheep stick. And it was a big fight going the way of the, the Dire team that last fight. Picking up the tight end. The problem is, they still haven't got enough map control because Roshan now takes the fall and it goes to the TLER side. Age is under the gyrocopter. He's now got a Yasha as well. PL's got a lot of farm to play around with though. He got a kill on the Queen of Pain. That was really the big kill that fight. Queen of Pain's Beyond Godlike streak ended. I think PL got about 800 gold for that. 750 gold for it. Just for the kill. And he got, he got some gold for the other assistant kills as well. So he's suddenly really caught up seeing on a big chunk of gold right now. We'll see whether he goes for a heart, maybe just a damage item, maybe something like a Manta style. His next item is going to be crucial to get up as soon as possible. His net worth is starting to fall behind, though. Queen of Pain and Gyrocopter have overtaken him. And oh, there's Templar Assassin's next item. Now completed. Paradox is uh, ready to get a bit more aggressive here. These team fights will be looking slightly better. This will definitely help up against this Tide Ravage whenever it's online. Tides had, always had this blink dagger, which is really the one thing you can use to catch some of these heroes by surprise, though. Even with BKBs up on the dire side, if you get caught by a blink ravage, if you don't pop that BKB fast enough, you still get caught out. You still get brought down fast. As uh, we're going to see whether or not the K can stay alive here. This is a loser bracket match, guys. Those of you just tuning in, this is the Armageddon Dota 2 Asia Grand Slam. We're live here down in the Marina Bay Sands Convention Center. So those of you in Singapore... Uh, come on down, those of you who have already come on down, thanks for coming on down to support the event here held by Armageddon. Those of you on the live stream, thanks for uh, checking out this event and supporting the Asian Dota 2 scene where we've got some of the, sort of the, uh, the strongest Southeast Asian upcoming teams uh, from, well, I think uh, eight, about eight different countries. Teams have flown in from Vietnam, from Thailand, from Malaysia, from Myanmar, from Sri Lanka in the case of uh, this team here, the Cade, and uh, Indonesia in the case of TLER. And they're competing for over $20,000 in ship gear and sponsorship money thanks to our Armageddon's efforts here in Singapore. TLER, man. It's been the death of you. Two fights have already been lost from similar stuff, but they, they're going to try D-Ward regardless. They get the tier 2 tower, though. 
There was backup nearby, so Bane was feeling pretty confident that he wouldn't get caught out there. And now we see, well, counter push at bottom lane. Pio gets himself a tower of his own, and he's now up to, wow, 5k gold. A lot of money to play around with there. And Queen of Pain decides now is not the time to push. We get the tier 2 tower, let's back off and farm. Same goes to the gyrocopter, TP's towards the mid lane. He's looking to get up his Mantis style, and that's probably what... That's when we see the next TLER sort of push and group up. Sure, they've got an Aegis here, but they want Mantis style on the gyrocopter. They want the sheep stick on the Queen of Pain. Both those two items coming up relatively soon, not to mention the Lifestealer. He's hard to harass somewhat in the near future. And with this gem, oh man, the map control is going to go all TLER's way. They don't have to worry about the sentries and dust as much. They don't have to worry about the PL invis. I say PL, but there's also a Templar Assassin as well. Templar Assassin who's been using that meld to stay alive in a lot of sticky situations. The spam coming out from this dive team once again, just trying to delay this push as much as possible. Tower attacks. They want that missile. They'll get that missile. And well, the siege at mid lane, maybe. They're grouping up TLR. They've got a lot of heroes here. There's only one out of tower remaining. And it looks like that's what they want. They've got this Aegis for another two or three minutes, so they want to make use of it. Make sure they get at least an outer tower, at least a tier two. And at this point, it's going to be hard to defend. No mech up just yet for this Keeper of the Light. Lifeshield just has to go in the front lines and just auto attack this tower down. He backs off. It could have almost gone into that one. Shadow Demon gets away before the bank can, can nightmare him up. Oh, side lane. There's a tight end who gets brought down. Queen of Pain going to drop an ultimate here. They've managed to bring down two. Queen of Pain goes down as well. Double kill going away. Templar Assassin. Gyrocopter trying to do all they can in BKB form. They have a gem though. PL, you've got to run. You can't stand and fight. You can't just see an invis. Same goes for the tier. Can they bring down the PL? Just. Just managed to bring him down. It's the buyback. Now we're going to be well in the back. A just gets popped. Gyrocopter now going to find himself on the run. There's a trap to slow him down. Oh no. The standing one gets brought down. Four hero kill sweep going the way of the Sri Lankans. What a fight coming from those guys. TA led things off with a double kill, and then they just got kill after kill from there on out. Paradox with his BKB. It's the key item here. He's now level 17 as well. Huge, huge fight going their way. As that PL now going to be looking at the heart of Taras. He's got to be close to it. He's had this reaper for some time. He did have to buy back that fight, which would have chewed through a bit of his gold, but he's now got some key levels as well. Juxtapose, maxed out. He's got all the ma or everything maxed out. And we're going to take another look at that decisive battle here at the bottom lane. TA BKB dodged all of the Queen of Pain Sonic Wave Ultimate Keeper of the Light surviving on such low HP in the back lines as well and well Gyrocopter even with his BKB off he just wasn't doing enough damage PL the only hero they could bring down it just didn't seem like the right target to be focusing down he was just too tanky took too much effort to bring down they need to focus on those supports look at the Shadow Demon and Keeper of the Light both those heroes so squishy so low HP they were both sitting on about a quarter HP and getting completely ignored I'm I think really the big fault there was that they didn't go for these two guys. Shadow Demon, Keep of the Light. The two squishy supports got ignored. They put everything into killing the Phantom Lancer. They also put through a lot of spells at that TA who just shrugged it off with the BKB and Refraction. So I think it was just bad target, target choices. Bag just, I mean, they just didn't really manage their spells all that well in that team fight. Top lane, we've got Paradox with his uh, BKB. He's got up to 3k gold now. What's his going to be his next item? Desolator, generally your go-to item. Going to that pure damage. Either the Desolator or a Daedalus, depending where, whether he wants to go for sort of the, the one-hit crit combo. If you want to chance it or you want to go for the Desolator with the more reliable damage. Not to mention Desolator can help bring down towers. Bring, basically focus fire a target with your team a bit better. Because you get the minus armor, which helps out not just you, but your team doing damage. With a Daedalus, it's just your pure damage of your own. I feel like this may be a better game for a Daedalus, though. Bring down heroes like the Life Sealer, tied really quickly, having a crit... If you can chance that crit, you can get those kills really, really fast. The Radiant team have decided to sort of back things off now. No Aegis for them, and Roshan, well, not respawning for some time. So they've got all these out of towers, but it's, well, it's on a dip in the way of the diet team, but it's definitely stabilized. We're not seeing this gold graph, which was just going up and up and up, continue to do so anymore after that last team fight. TA, kill after kill going his way, and suddenly things are looking all right for this diet team. I can hear them shouting in excitement after that last fight. They were, they were feeling good about it. They were pretty happy with how things turned out. Shadow Demon with a drum of endurance. The support items are coming up now as well. Keeper of the Light has the mech and... All in all, these heroes, I mean, you've got the pipe on the clockwork as well as a Ghost Scepter. He's now got that gem. I think he saw it, yeah, he saw it from the TLER side. No gem now. They're going to have to go back to using Sentries and Dust. Of which they do have one of, but... Is it going to be enough? 
Queen of Pain now with, well, a sheep stick. So they've got, TLR have the farm advantage. You can still see it, these net worths here. It's TLR who are leading as far as overall farm goes, but it's uh, the Dire team who are winning these, the last team fight. Some of these decisive fights are going the way of the PPL and PL late game. Well, you can never count him out. Even with his, even with falling behind in farm, he bought back. I, I, that was the really the one thing where the Kate are going to say, we had a great fight, but why did PL buy back? He bought back and didn't really do all that much. He went back to farming. The fight was already won. They didn't need, need the PL buyback. If he didn't buy back, he'd already have this heart here. As well as some more on top of that. Queen of Pain. Oh, looking for blood. Looking for action here. TA in this room, though. Manage to, manages to elude them. He can't quite find him. Life still is still trying to work on this heart of Taras. He's had the Reaver Vitality Boost. He just needs that recipe now. As it looks like Life Seal, he's just going to try to push out this top lane. As uh, the rotation back to defend, it's going to have to. Well, for the K, they, they, they've, got, they've got some breathing room. They're not too worried about these lanes pushing out just yet. They can see where the, most of these TLR heroes are on the top lane. Gyrocopter, Titan, Queen of Pain. Just looks like they're going to go for a brute five man push at top, but we saw how that ended for them last time. I think last time was the main problem was they weren't sticking together properly. Type wasn't there to provide the backup need, and there was a BKB on TA. Heroes can't go off running in by themselves when there's a BKB on TA, because TA can just focus down one target with a complete ease. The gem is there as well for the Dire team. That's going to help them D-Ward and maintain some map control. TP back. And so they're trying to split push as much as possible, but just not really working out. Mance is still going to get popped by Tilia. They just want to chip away at this tower. Instant blinding light. Give them this chance, and well, the illusion's not even hitting on this tower, so just a couple hundred damage done, and all said and done, they don't really achieve a whole lot there at the top lane, and well, bottom lane, PL with some illusions going for a split push here. This tier 2 tower likely to go down unless we see some TP's bottom, and he can get recalled back into this fight, so he's not worried about having to be in this fight. Keep the light can recall. PL may not even need to be recalled. He's, I think, he, yeah, he's got a TP scroll as well, so multiple ways to defend. Oh, Queen of Pain. You've found the Keeper of the Light. No more Illuminate Sam, you've tied. Oh, blinks into a Cogs here. That's going to hurt his mana. Oh, has he actually got mana for an ultimate? He's going to have to be able to pop a Ravage. No, he's mid-animation. Gets brought down. In goes the life still, though. He's going to be looking for some blood. He's already found three. PL needs to get to this fight. Where is the PL? He's right in the middle of things. He's getting an illusion army up. Is it going to be enough? He's trying to bring down the life still. Cogs not going to cancel the TP. Life still rages. TP's out. PL is there to save the day. Can they find a way more? They may be trying to hunt down this gyrocopter. Gyrocopter. Oh, traps, traps, no traps. If he uses that trap, that could have almost been a kill there. Clockwork didn't have the ultimate to go hookshotting in afterwards, but it was definitely close. PL, with that illusion army that he left at bottom, did some damage to the tier three tower as well. So more damage actually done by the Dire team. The PL comes back, gets some solid kills. They don't miss out on killing the life cell, but they get some damage under this tier three tower. If PL came even later, he could have done even more additional damage to it. But both teams are going to back off, look to get their na last bit of farm up. We'll take another quick look at that last battle here, guys, and see exactly what happened here. And it really looks like TLR, they just overextend. They really want to get that Keeper Light. They know how important he is for defending, spamming the Illuminate, but it was at too big of a cost. And Tyler made a big mistake there. He goes blinking in when they were just focusing down the Keeper Light. He wasn't needed to kill the Keeper of the Light. He should have waited for four or five years to group up, especially wait for the PL. He needs to wait for the PL to come into the fight, then look for the Blink Ravage, then look to set things up. Luckily, Lifestealer escapes. Lifestealer almost goes, almost goes down as well in that fight. And if Lifestealer dies, well, then it's a huge, huge win for the Dire side for the Cade. But already, it's looking like a pretty decent pos position for them to be in. They're not really gaining ground as far as the gold graph goes, but I imagine XP is. Yeah, XP took a big jump down in that, well, not the la last fight, but the fight before. That fight went pretty even. But we'll see the Dire team looking to, to do something to get themselves further ahead. And there we have it. Roshan goes down. Age is onto the Phantom Lancer. And also just denying it from your phones. Oh, Clockwork. Aiming for the bay. Hits his teammate. Hookshot not going to land. They're trying to get this TA. There is a Fiend's Grip tied now with the Ravage. He didn't use in that last one. That many. It's a nice three-man Ravage here. Lifefield's in there with the Rage. Going to bring down the Templar Assassin. Templar Assassin had the gem as well. Gem now on the floor. Cogs trying to help keep Monkey alive. But unfortunately, it seals his fate. He gets caught on the wrong side of him. End, end of the day, just saves the clockwork. Oh, Queen of Pain, no sheep stick up. Couldn't finish off that kill. And he's now looking for more. Especially that Keeper of the Light. They have some major hate going for this Keeper of the Light if they can find him. Isolate him, bring him down. 
They love diving in for him. And TA now on the sidelines. Question is for how much longer? 50 seconds on the death timer. Shadow Demon, about 25 seconds there. And the push is now coming on the mid lane. PL needs to stall as long as possible. Keep the needs to illuminate. Illuminate as much as possible. TA going to buy back. Oh, Queen, Queen of Pain. Once again, trying to just snipe this. Keep it like, life filler with a blink dagger now completed. Oh, the Cade. Rage is off cooldown. The problem is for life filler, that means goodbye mana. Goodbye mana. Life filler can't TP out. He's caught out in the cogs here. He's going to go down here without any mana. You can't rage out of that when you can't even TP. TA pops a BKB. They brought down life filler. They're going to look for, they brought down Tidehunter as well. Can they bring down any more? Gyrocopter, is he going to make it? TP's out just in time. Would love to see a level 2 defuse on this PL. We saw how d crippling it was to the life still here. And that was with a slow mana burn. If that's a level 2 defusal blade, it goes up from 20 mana burner hit to 36 mana burn hit. Almost doubles your mana burn. So level 2 defusal blade is such a good item to have against this life still. Because when he's not in rage form, his mana is getting just burnt down so fast. Not turned into the Hunter. Tide has no arcane boot. You throw some illusions on him and his mana is going to get burnt just so, so fast. So I definitely feel getting a level 2 Diffusal Blade is the way to go here. But more importantly, pushing down towers and just finishing off more heroes is going to really help them out here. Oh, Bane. Caught in no man's land. Lance wakes him up, finishes him off. Two heroes dead now. Do they look to keep on pushing here? It's a 5v3 scenario. Question is, where is the rest of their team? Lysil, 20 seconds on the sidelines. And that's really your key damage dealing hero with Heart, Deso, and Armlet. But it looks like the Cade, well, they're going to back things off now. Definitely expecting a drop. Hey, that's not a drop. Was expecting a drop, not really getting it, though. The XP graph doesn't deliver either, but it really feels like the K are the ones starting to pull away a bit here. The net worth, the GPM, it begs to differ, but something the, the, these graphs and charts aren't taking into account is the PL factor. PL is one of those late-game heroes who can do so much with less farm. Sure, you need, you need farm, but you don't need as much as sort of those hard-carry lifestealer. For PL to fight lifestealer in the 1v1, he needs two or three items. Lifestealer, and he needs four or five. And that's what we're seeing here. And PL, well, he's the one coming out on top when they're having a head-on clash. That mid can't fight. I mean, Lifestyle was overextending a bit there, but all said and done, it was a uh, one battle going the way of the Cade. It did cost him a TA buyback. That's where this gold graph is uh, somewhat... Well, the net, the net worth especially is somewhat favoring the Radiant team. They're using a bit of gold to stay in this game using these buybacks. Radiant team now uh, we can just keep these lanes pushed out. They're doing so up top lane here with the Queen of Pain. Question is, what's happening bottom lane? Last time, they went for a top lane push. They lost a tier 2 bottom as well. Took some damage on this tier 3 here. Going for these all-in pushes just hasn't really worked out too well for them. And problem is, you're up against a PO with Aegis now as well. The Cade, just playing this as safe and stable as possible. Looking to just make sure that none of their lanes can be pushed down. And this is really it. Just turtle with PL. The PL doesn't have to be there. He can look to push out one lane. Four heroes turtle, one hero split pushes. And when the fight breaks out, PL gets recalled in. Or a TP zone. Either or. Maybe he's looking at some boots of travel soon. So he can get recalled in. And then after the fight's won, he can TP back to the lane he was pushing. He gets a bit scared here, though. And to see what these two teams are looking to do here. TLER not really showing themselves on the map. Same goes for the, the Kate side. Either team could just be singing there and base could be smoked up. What do the two teams want to do here? Gyrocopter, bottom lane, he gets revealed. He's got flat cans and he had to deal with this push. Look at this T3 tower. Whoa, that's like another 500 damage being dealt and that was just PL Illusions. Oh no. PL. Illusion gets caught out in the jungle here. Real PL not getting caught though. There's a gem up on the tide hunter. He's looking for the real PL, but PL is nowhere to be seen eludes them for the time being as TLER, well, they're just going to keep on hiding. Well, we'll keep, it's, it's, I feel like we're, we're watching a game of hide and seek right now. Except it's not one person looking for the, like five or six hiders. It's a team of TLER, five seekers looking just for the one hiding here of the PL. Where is he hiding? He's got illusions now at top lane and it looks like the real hero there as well. And they're like, holy crap, how are you bottom lane and now you're top? Round one win goes to the PL. And they're back to hunting. Back to trying to seek him down. Or possibly just going to go for a push here. Especially while PL's top. It's going to take him some time to get to that T2 tower and start pushing again. And they've got some nice creep equilibrium moment. Well, creep momentum going in the mid lane. Possibly even bottom. That's where PL's done some real damage to them already. So they can get this bottom lane pushed in. Try to force a team fight. But team fights have not really been their forte. Where you've got clockwork initiation to go into. 
keep it like with a lot of long range AoE initiation potential. It's really not all that easy for them to fight into. As uh, the Sri Lankan Dota team, they're actually, I mean, they're, they're holding and defending so, so well. Jarakov are going to go, go to the high ground here. They need PL here back to defend, it looks like. Or do we just look at this split push again? Life's looking to go blinking it. Uh oh, who's he found? It's Clockwork with a ghost scepter though. Tide Blink Rabbit this time hits four. PTA doesn't get caught out with a BKB. Gyrocopter pops his own BKB. And problem is there's a Fiend script. Perfect counter to a BKB. TA gets gripped up first down. Life's still at his end. PL now on his own defending. He's going to get brought down. It looks like there's a gem on the side. They bring him down once. Uh, do they need to bring him down twice? Yes, they do. There's a buyback immediately from the Phantom Lance. And this fight, uh oh. TA did not have buyback. He bought a Daedalus before that fight broke out and he popped the BKB thinking, hey, I got a BKB Daedalus, I can just pop the BKB, do some serious damage. But no, the Fiend's Grip was there. What a fantastic team fight coming out from this TLER side. It looked like they were in trouble all of a sudden in this game, but it, all it took was one great decisive fight. They're getting at least one set of Raxes here. Bottom melee Rax has been destroyed. They want this range Rax as well, perhaps. Oh, PL, be careful, son. Slowed. Silent. Brought down a second time. Oh no, TFC. He's overextended. He gets brought down. The Indonesian team are now shouting. They're excited. They're really getting into this. They know this game is now in their grasp. They've taken one set of Raxes. Can they get another? TA and PL both still on the sidelines here. Gyrocopter going to get disrupted. Is there a purge? There is. Oh, Gyrocopter, BKB trying to keep himself alive. He needs to run. The physical damage is going to be enough to bring him down. Illuminate is off the Tide Hunter as well. Gyrocopter buyback. They want to push. They want to end this now. They're really not wasting any time. They want to really push while PL is down. They've got 60 seconds. That's the timer. 60 seconds. Keeper of the Light going to go back. He's stolen that gem. Tide drops. They've got no gem to deal with this PL. And I've got a feel. It's now or never for TLER. They've got to go mid. They've got to look to end this game soon and fast. Life Sealer is up. Queen of Pain is up. They're a bit low on HP. But really, fighting when, when PL's on the sidelines is the ideal time to fight. PL, man. You need that level 2 defusal. You need that mana bird. And oh, look at this gyrocopter. Now has a completed butterfly. Even if they don't get Raxes, another set of Raxes while PL is down, you just look at these item progression. BKB up on the Queen of Pain with a 2.6k gold. Life Sealer. What's his next item? Boots of, oh, Boots of Travel actually being bought out here. Interesting choice. Has the Boots of Travel and Phase Boots. Wants to be able to just die, buy back, and then get right back into the fight. Needs to make sure he has gold to do so, though. That's going to be the key thing here, is that the Radiant team, well, their item progression is just far exceeding their opponents. A late-game mech even coming on this page. He say, I've had enough supporting. I'm going to get some items. Tide has a Ghost Step to help deal against, help, help basically combat the TA. This is entirely built at basically making sure TA can't BKB, blink in, and try to burst down the Tide. Because that's what TA is trying to do every single fight. During that BKB, bring down Tide so that he can't get off a good Ravage. But with a Ghost Scepter... You can stay alive long enough so that the BKB are aware of. Because this BKB must be looking at about a 5 second BKB now. 6 seconds on the BKB. So maybe I'd have slightly outlast this Ghost Scepter with a 4 second duration. But you're going to have to hit in that 2 second window. You've got to hit some big crits. Got to bring them down in that 2 second window. And that's going to be something hard to do. They want to go for another set of Raxes here. No team with Aegis here. Roshan is going to be respawning in the next couple of minutes. But for the time being, it's TLR. They're feeling confident they can go for another push. PL, great at pushing out this bottom line, even with these mega, mega crypts just in the bottom line. He can push this out. He's got his illusion army. Even without his main hero there, he can still do so pretty easily. His illusions, they just create more illusion, and it's just this exponential effect where it's a continuous army that can just fight these mega creeps at bottom line. They've got to worry more importantly about this top lane where, well, Life Shield's going to be looking for another blink initiation. Who's he going to be able to find? Does he have buyback here? It doesn't look like he's going to have enough gold for it. He'd love to have that here. Oh, Keeper. Almost, if, if Life Sealer blinks in there, could have almost actually brought down the Keeper Light, but Keeper Light wasn't any vision from the Radiant team. Life Sealer just deals a bit of chip damage, gets his tower down to about half HP, then backs off. Peel Illusion Army still pushing up bottom lane. So they really good good decision from the K. They make sure they don't have to wear up bottom lane because the problem is they've lost racks at bottom, so that's the lane they have to constantly defend, but by pushing it out, they now can all they basically focus all their efforts on winning this top lane fight. Pushing back the mid lane gyrocopter, pushing back this top lane five man push, or well, currently a four man push coming from TLER. The PL Illusion Army finally dies at the bottom, but they bought themselves at least a minute or so before that before that bottom lane is going to reach their base and they have to defend it. Oh, this is problematic. They need to get rid of this. I believe they have a gem. No. And the other thing is they go to deward this. Oh, there, there we go. They'd love to deward this, but if they go to do so, they may just get jumped on. 
GA, careful. There we go. Brings it down in one click, luckily. Didn't need a second. And this is just continuous split push. They send Gyrocopter mid, four top. And it's just Illusion. Mantis sends the Illusions right into the tower. 10 damage a hit, but hey, you get off about 10, 20 hits, and you do about 100, 150 damage every time your Mantis styles up. So over time, this tier three tower will die. It's up to the Dire team to engage in. Meanwhile, top lane, Queen of Pain finished off the tier three there. So it's just send in Mantra Illusions mid, send in whatever damage you can do at top. Lysa can just rage, hit the tower two or three times, and then when rage is about to wear off, he backs off. He spends three seconds of his rage hitting the tower, and then three seconds of his rage backing off and retreating. Top lane now, TLE are going to continue their push here. This time they're grouped as five. Life still as well as Gyrocopter there. Without this tower up, they're confident. Clockwork going to go into Blade Mail. He's going to try to bring down Gyrocopter from this as a BKB. TA has pulled the backline though. Catches out the Bane once more. The grip is not there to deal with this. TA, TA needs to clean up. It's the one year who can save the day, but unfortunately there's a sheep stick on Queen of Pain. Sheep stick helps bring down the TA. There's no buyback there. PL's been brought down as well. PL, there's no buyback. Oh, there is a buyback actually. He just has enough gold for it, it looks like. He's going to buy back. Rax is already, on the, oh, already down though. And it could be too little too late. Only Bane has died. The life still going to go in for more. Looking for this keep of the life. Peel just trying to help fight his team's way out of this one. But trouble, trouble at top lane. Rampage for the gyrocopter. Gyrocopter is bringing down target after target. The stand-in. Not really a stand-in. That's just the name he's playing. And I believe this is the full TLER team. Has just got himself a rampage in the enemy base here. GG well played coming up from the cage. The Sri Lankans have put up a hell of a fight here. At one point, I thought they had this game. I thought they had held out long enough to get PL farmed and that they could actually win this game. They've flown all the way from Sri Lanka. Kudos to them. Hats off to you guys. You guys have done a great job representing the Sri Lankan Dota 2 scene. And unfortunately, it's the end of the road for them here. They put up a great fight. They've come all the way to Singapore. And well, they've done, they've done their country proud, regardless of how you look at this. They put up a great fight up against a strong Indonesian team in TLER. And we're going to see, well, the throne get brought down. TLER are victorious here in your Armageddon. Dota 2 Asia Grand Slam. And guys, that means we're going to have more Dota 2 action coming up soon. This is the loser bracket where Science see teams get knocked out. We've seen most of our winner bracket round one and round two matches, but now we're going to get ourselves into the loser bracket. We see this real consent home. TLER, they keep their tournament ho hopes alive as they want to be walking away with that $20,000 in sponsor money, prize money as well, sponsorship gear. So we're going to be back soon, guys, with more live action here at the Armageddon Dota 2 Asia Grand Slam. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm Gods from Beyond the Summit. We'll be back soon with more live action.